Well, the two major categories of activity that go under the title of NLP from my point of view are what I consider to be the crowning achievement, the most radical part of the proposal that's implicit in the whole approach in NLP, which is modeling. Um, I recognize a thousand different varieties of modeling. I think as a species we're compulsive, obsessive about modeling, that is creating knowledge based in the form of internal maps which allow us to make guesses about what's actually going on out there and provide rules of engagement for conduct in the world. Now, we have among us people we recognize as geniuses who have achieved such superior levels of performance in some discipline or in some uh, particular professional activity that they become av avatars or exemplars or if our attitude is appropriate, an opportunity for us to upgrade the quality of our own game. The question is how do you get access to these deep patterns in uh, a genius in order to assimilate them yourself so that you have the choice? And then finally, in some cases, the ability to make explicit what you've assimilated and now have this behavioral competency in the form of a transferable code, verbal or verbal plus some formal aspects. This, of course, is a description of the history of the development of NLP. And the answer, surprisingly enough, is uh, to become quite childlike. The paradox is the following. Everybody knows that children are the most powerful, accelerated learners in any context. This is independent of language and culture. And what are the children able to do that we as adults find difficult? And the answer is, the children do not have to compare the incoming data stream of experience as they're in the presence of their parents and other children and authority figures with an already well-developed set of internal maps which are the basis of their trial and erring in the world. They have very little of this. Therefore, the task of unfiltered assimilation of what's going on in their environment becomes essentially the principal learning strategy by which all of you watching and listening to this presentation have achieved the most important parts of your competency as a human being. So we know this system works brilliantly. It's very much in parallel to the fact that children have no problem learning languages other than the native language or the local language for the simple reason that they have a set of circuits Chomsky once referred to as the organ language or the language acquisition device, which give an exposure to stimulation, that is the speech patterns of native speakers around them, will automatically go through this assimilation process unconsciously, uncritically, and by trial and error and through play activities with no sense of self-consciousness, they will come to a quick mastery of a language which is interesting because some of the most competent people I've met intellectually and in terms of research in the world have not to date succeeded in creating a single complete grammar of any significant portion of any natural language. This in a way is a measure of complexity. Now, this is a very complex task obviously, but it can be done if the stance that the learner takes is appropriate both in language learning and more generally in the modeling of genius, if you apply a non-NLP strategy, roughly a left brain analytic strategy, you will probably learn very powerful and important things and probably at high speed. The problem is that the things you will learn are essentially confirmation of elements already in your internal maps. If you use your internal maps, your, your local knowledge base, as the basis for a comparative analytic attempt to understand as you're exposed to the patterns of the genius, the only, you're essentially establishing a set of band with filters. And anything that actually gets through these filters will get through simply because they are congruent with distinctions already in the knowledge base, the internal maps. This means that the, the, the key elements that makes this person a genius will unlike be unlikely to pass unless you yourself are already a genius in this area and even then the style the particular patterns of this genius may not be compatible or commensurate with the ones that you have if you really wish a deep appreciation and the ability to assimilate 
fundamental patterns of genius. One choice you have in a face-to-face -face communication encounter with a genius is to suspend all that stuff, which removes the filtering effects of the accumulated knowledge base, the internal maps, removes that set of filters, and allows you, as a child does, with absolutely no attempt to understand what you're doing, to, through imitation, micro-muscle movement, the mirror neurons, and synesthesia, to assimilate complex patterns at high speed with the same kind of depth that is typical of the, the source of these patterns, the genius. If, on the other hand, you activate your knowledge base, your internal maps, then only those elements in the genius's behavior, which correspond to some element in your internal map, will pass the band pass filter. Um, and there are many cases in which the extreme effort involved in doing NLP unconscious assimilation, extreme for an adult, easy for a child, um, making all those arrangements and actually carrying out this kind of modeling, and there are cases where you want to use mixed modeling. That is, you may do part of it consciously and part of it with unconscious assimilation. In general, um, the question is a practical question. In a corporate setting, for example, if you give me the top salesperson or the top strategic planner or the team, which is consistently more productive and profitable than any of the other work teams, it is possible for me to give you back a model which is transferable using either analytic or NLP unconscious simulation modeling. If it's something that's relatively simple, uh, I may be able to give it analytically. Uh, this, of course, depends once again on the state of my knowledge base. So there's a risk here that I may not allow to pass because of the filtering exactly the difference that makes the difference between this top production team and all the other teams. So there are no mistakes here. There are consequences to the strategy you use. If you have the competency or are willing to develop the competency to suspend access to your internal knowledge base, your internal maps, uh, and participate in this unconscious simulation, I'll guarantee you'll get the patterns.